So now violation of publication ethics, authorship and courtships, contributorships. These are the importance. So ethics and organization, their role, goal of the organizations, process of publication, criteria of authorships, academic life results around the world. How this academic life and results is around the world? That should you know that substantial contribution to the conceptual conception and design. Acquisition of the data or analysis and interpretation of data, drafting the article or reviewing it critically for important intellectual content, final approval of version of the published. So, types of authorships, ghost authorship. Ghost authorship is very important because some people write the article in a different name. So, great of the gift, guest or gift honorary author or inclusion of exclusion of authors. Group authorships, uh, activity sheets, or uh, assigning authorship, these kind of things we should all have to know that how it should be done. Then identification of publication or misconduct of conceptions. So the scientific misconduct and intentional international intentional biases, unintentional plagiarism. That is the important of the issues. We have the intentional versus identification of publication, misconduct complication. So it is a intention versus unintentional plagiarism. That is a becoming very important part of this. Identification and publication of misconduct complaints and appeals. So the next best option to prevent that disputes to have open discussions among all the authors. That is the most important part of this is and multidisciplinary so multidisciplinary research prior to initiating the research. That is at a time of protocol drafting, defining the role of responsibility of each author further reduces the chances of disputes within the research team. Editors ask for individual contribution of authors in designing the manuscripts. Journal can blacklist the guest of the host authors. Plagiarisms do and don't do. So what process and the do and do the what process of plagiarisms and first use English languages in the year 1696 uh, in the year 1601 by the dramatist Ben Johnson to describe someone who was guilty of the theft. Plagiarism is derived from the Latin word plag and when it means kidnap. So scientific misconduct is a a plagiarist and there is a person who commits plagiarisms by definition plagiarisms is that we previously published work of authors or author of a once in the manuscripts without the consent, credit or acknowledgement in the forms of these things. So individual institutional verses or the intellectual verses. So these are the very important part of these the examples of the plagiarisms. So institutional verses, the institutional verses and intentional verses and intentional plagiarism that is important. The examples of plagiarism, different examples of plagiarisms we have given in this corner. You can see in these textbooks where we have given all these different kinds of examples of plagiarisms and then causes of the research of plagiarism, remedy of the plagiarisms. How can, I, how can we do and causes of the remedy of public plagiarism? If you go and check in the plagiarism section, we can find different redundant publications and then we decide and then we can change it. We can see what kind of this given. We should see the different guidelines of given by these different institutions, COPE and all, OEM. So all these things we have to go by and then we to see that how can it be done of this. So these kind of things we have to show the mechanism for the regulating the research. We have to know that we have given in the course material of the, all these things. Now you have to see that predatory publication and the journals. That is becoming very important for you know because that's we have a huge pressure on publication and everybody is under the public pressure in the publication. So how do we go about this cope and publications of these things? So that is a guideline. So that is a rush. So how to do, do these things? So the predatory publication that are to make you in a different position, to put you in a different position, there are some 
many, many publishers, they are making up, bringing out a different kind of publications and asking you to provide the money and then they will publish. So now the UGC has given a complete guideline that the papers has to be in a ranking journals or in a UGC care listed journals. So all this in predatory publishing has become a very very known. So we should know that before publishing that anyone sending an article in a particular journal we should first check whether it is a predatory publication or not, whether it is a, a, a care listed journal or not, or whether it is a, a wave of science listed journal or not. These kind of things we should go and first, first find out and then only you should decide and should do. Otherwise, we will have a, 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 a different kind of problems. So, FAQ of the predatory journals, we should, I have given some FAQ of the predatory journals. So, you should go and see then in the link what is the FAQ of the predatory journals. So what is what is the predatory journals? Why do we academic publish such journals? Because of the peer pressure. What is the harm caused by the predatory journals? They will, because if you publish in this, that will not give you any credit of your account, academic credit in that situation. So you will lose the money, you will lose the appreciation, you will lose the, your prestige. So how do we, does one find it by giving a journal to the predatory? So you should go to the link, I told you already, you should go to the different link and find out what kind of journals are available and in difference. So that's you should able to find out and go and to see that whether this is available or not. So Characteristics of the predatory publications. So all should we go and see that what is the hidden uh, clause they have given. So all these hidden clause you should give. You sh they should give a warning signals. So there is a name of the journals, review, ownerships, editorial concepts. Author fees, all these things you have to check. I have given in the course material. So there are 16 numbers of kind of things. So general advice of the approach is going forward. Authors are professionals. They should know that how should we go and how to cope up of this creating of all these things. You should know that. The different funders of the institutions, they also check whether that your publication is on either in a peer review journal or not. So that's what you have to do that how to know that predatory publishers has given this kind of things. So are we really in a problem? So IFLA has given a code of conduct of the for the libraries of ethics. If you go and see that how this code of conduct has been contacted, so if you how to safeguard yourself. These contacts are not that you safeguard your safeguard yourself. So checklist you have to give that associate membership memberships, transparency, then indexing, quality of previous publication, fees, indexing, and then copyright of that review, peer review, uh, co copyright, then peer review is not they are not editorial board, who are in the editorial board, you have to see then website quality, all these things you have to see. So this in summary, this unit began with evolution of ethical issues in research and these important bodies regulating ethical guides, lines and protocols and functions and the into ethical issues and scientific research. So ethics and which means rules of conduct or moral principles gain importance. When it comes to the creating knowledge of any kind and specifically in the domain of research because the out of research is directly influenced by the integrity of the researchers. So the topic of research ethics is important not only when conducting research but also when publishing it. So it is one of the crucial pillars of maintaining scientific integrity and credibility. So thereafter, there is a discussion of this, of various issues. So we should know that what kind of things, what should be done on a scientific conductivity. So first of all, these ethical issues does not only help the maintain the scientific integrity, but also safeguard the primary contributorship of the researchers. So that is the most important. We should think about that. It is good for us. It is not for others. So how do we go about it? The, how these guidelines has help us? We should see. So scientific misconduct, the examples of plagiarisms, causes of the remedy and plagiarisms, all we have discussed in these papers. So all of the learners, I will give a good wishes to the learners. So they should be able to learn of these things. And if there is any doubt, they always can go to the different yeah, and you can see this. Thank you, thank you very much.